Welcome in to Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. On today's show, it is our rumors mailbag. You have questions and you're in luck because I have answers. And people may be wondering, how do I can get involved in the mailbag show? Well, if you subscribe to Seahawks Today and turn on notifications, then you can be a part of our Q&As that we do on our live shows each and every Wednesday at 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific on Seahawks Today Live. And speaking of subscribers, this week with the Seahawks taking on the New York Giants, we are in a bit of a sub-battle with our Giants channel, Giants Now with Marshall Green. And there's nothing I would like to do more than defeat Marshall Green and our Giants channel this week. I want to prove that not only Seahawks fans are the best fans on the football field, but also the best fans off the football field as well on the internet. And so let's beat Giants now. Let's beat them bad. Let's put them in their misery here. Subscribe to the channel now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV, so you never miss a moment of what we're doing here on the channel. Our first question comes from Raw Hector writes, does Trey Brown have enough time to catch up and play week eight? So Trey Brown off of the pup list now, and questions are out there of what is necessarily next for him as far as when we will see Trey Brown on the football field again. And the updates have been kind of limited, but there is a cutoff date of sorts within the next couple of weeks where Trey Brown is not back out there. Then he has to go on season-ending IR. So I would think that the Seahawks are going to do everything that they can to get him back on the field as quickly as possible. I don't know necessarily week eight, but I do think we're going to see Trey Brown back sooner rather than later, personally, in that front. Thanks for the question, Raw Hector. Michael writes, Bradley Chubb to the Hawks for the Broncos' original second. Should it be our second instead or the Broncos? Too high, too low, what y'all think? Michael, great question. And a second for Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb, a talented football player. And it would be funny, wouldn't it, if the... Seahawks were in a situation where they gave the Broncos back their second round pick but had to send over Bradley Chubb in exchange. That'd be that'd be just great. Uh, for, for me, you know, Teddy G also uh, brings this up as well. Bradley Chubb for the Seahawks second round pick. Um, I'll say this. When it comes to Bradley Chubb, he's still relatively young and he's already had all sorts of injury issues. He's only had one season where he's played it in its entirety at this point. So for me, I'm not giving up a second round pick for a player that's already had health issues. And as you get older, it doesn't get easier. So uh, while it would be funny if uh, we saw the Seahawks in a situation where they sent Denver back their pick to get Bradley Chubb back, personally, uh, I don't think I would want that to happen because of the injury issues that Chubb has endured. Next question from Common wants to know, first place, can the Seahawks make the playoffs and win the division? So here's the deal. The Seahawks right now, 4-3 and three record, first place, and the Cardinals, the Niners, the Rams, all of them are struggling at this point in time. The Rams, the defending Super Bowl champs, have not looked like a shade of themselves. The 49ers, they have issues, and it's not just that they're playing Jimmy G with Trey Lance being out here. Now, I expect the 49ers to get better. Getting McCaffrey was a big deal for them. I think it's possible the Seahawks win the division. I don't think that they're the favorites, despite having the best record right now, but it's still within the realm of possibility that they certainly could. I wouldn't rule it out uh, as far as I'm concerned. What say you guys? Will the Seahawks win the NFC West? Will they get the job done and take home the NFC West division title? If you think they will, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Let me know in the comments section. Why for yes, in for no, if the Seahawks will win the NFC West. Next question from Raw Hector writes, Hawks couldn't get Quinn, definitely dropped the ball. So the Eagles gave up a fourth round pick for Robert Quinn. And Quinn is still one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. And, you know, as of right now, the Eagles are the Super Bowl favorites. They have the best record, the last undefeated team. You have to think that viewing that pick as number 32, essentially, right? And so 
in the Seahawks situation, it's not like where we would be saying to ourselves, if the Seahawks were to trade one of their picks, that it would have had to have been a third round pick. I think the Seahawks could have given up the Broncos or their own pick and gotten Robert Quinn instead of uh, the Eagles being able to get Robert Quinn. Look, Robert Quinn, I mean, the Eagles just got better, right? I mean, the Eagles were already the best team, and now they're even a better football team. As far as I'm concerned for Seattle, uh, I would not have minded giving up a fourth-round pick to bring in Robert Quinn. I personally would have made that move. I understand that the Seahawks enjoy having a young team that's building in the right direction, but uh, I wouldn't have been posed at all to bring in Robert Quinn. It would have cost you, though. He uh, certainly would have brought some salary with him as far as that goes. Robbie writes, Phil Haynes looks legit at right guard. Trade Gabe Jackson. Well, I don't know who's going to want Gabe Jackson, uh, quite frankly. I don't know what you can necessarily get for Gabe Jackson, what kind of trade market there is, but... I agree. Uh, I like what I've seen from Phil. Phil's a good football player, and uh, Gabe Jackson, his best days are behind him, quite frankly, at this point. So it's a legit question, but I I don't see uh, there being much of a market for Gabe Jackson at this point in time. But thanks for uh, chiming in there. Today's show is presented by BetUS, the exclusive sportsbook partner of Chat Sports. You go to chatsports.com slash bet, use the promo code Seahawks125, and get a 125% deposit bonus. You put $100 down. You get $125 to spend for free. You can bet on this weekend's NFL action, including your Seahawks taking on the Giants. Seahawks, just about a three-point favorite or so. You also bet on the NBA, which has started up uh, within the last couple of weeks. World Series going on, college football as well. It's all in one place. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Seahawks125. Taurus writes, hashtag Seahawks. Uh, should Seattle trade for Roquan Smith for a second and a conditional fourth round pick that turns into a third if he gets 10 sacks and five interceptions because uh, I think they really need linebacker help. Um, I got to tell you, that's a, that's a lot to dissect here. 10 sacks, five picks, turns into a third, all that. Uh, you, you kind of lost me. That, that's that, that, that's a lot to take in. It's hard to imagine a trade being done uh, to that point when it comes to statistics of incentives and everything here. I see where you're going of the idea of Roquan Smith. I think Roquan Smith is a good football player, but to me that might be a bit much as far as that concern uh, of the specifics of that trade uh, personally. But uh, I, I don't see that happening. The Seahawks do need linebacker help, but I, I don't necessarily see that situation all unfolding and playing out to get a guy like Roquan Smith. Coach Dreadhead writes, should the Seahawks go after an offensive, it defensive player before the trade deadline? And what would be the most you guys give up? I think it's offensive or defensive players, what Coach Dreadhead's trying to say here. And as far as I'm concerned of what the Seahawks should do when it comes to the trade deadline here, I think that all options are on the table. I would personally look at running back number two options. I would look at maybe a wide receiver three. That's the things I would point to offensively. Defensively, I think that you're looking at a linebacker or another pass rusher of some sorts. Those are the things I would look at. And I'll say this, and we're going to talk about this throughout the week here on the channel. I would view things like this. You know the Seahawks have a bright future. They nailed this past draft, right? We've all agreed on that. And with the limited cap space the Seahawks have, just about $3 million and everything, I would say that the Seahawks need to be bargain shoppers. You don't need to be going overboard and bring in players with giant salaries and give up a lot for them. What can you bargain shop? What can you bargain buy for? That's what I'd be looking at at either side of the ball, potentially. So, Coach Dreadhead, as far as I'm concerned, I think anything's on the table at this point. Tyler Brown writes, is Walker the next beast mode? So, I was looking at some statistics from the folks at NextGen Stats that I work with NFL and Amazon and all that, and... The next-gen stats on Kenneth Walker 
of just his raw speed is just something else, off the charts. And we already know about the power and everything that he possesses. Um, Beast Mode, I, I don't know about Beast Mode. Beast Mode was certainly one of a kind, Marshawn Lynch was. But Kenneth Walker is something in his own right. I love what I have seen from Kenneth Walker at this point. And for me, he's going to be the Offensive Rookie of the Year. And he's going to put himself in the conversation for, for the Pro Bowl. I said, and not a lot of people liked it when I said it at the time, but I said that when he was drafted, this guy by the end of the year is going to be your number one running back. And he's better than Rashad Penny. Wasn't a knock on Rashad Penny, but I liked more what Kenneth Walker had to offer. And he has just been on another level the last couple of weeks. And I think he's going to keep it up throughout the year. Will he win rookie of the year? We here at Seahawks today do think he will win offensive rookie of the year. Do you agree with that statement? If so, type T for true. If not, type F for false. Let me know in the comments section if you agree with that statement. Kenneth Walker III will win Rookie of the Year. T for true, F for false. Ashley writes in, hashtag Seahawks, do you think we will keep Geno as our quarterback or draft a new quarterback? So, Ashley, I get this question in some way, shape, or form every week. And here's what I would say as far as the situation goes. If Geno Smith continues to play at this level like he's been playing, then he will be back next year, and he will be your starter next year. But if there is a quarterback that you like, if the Seahawks coaching staff says, we really like C.J. Stroud, or we really like Bryce Young, or Will Levis, somebody there that they fall in love with and have an opportunity to draft, you still draft them, and you let them sit behind Geno Smith. I think the Seahawks are in a very similar situation to what the Chiefs were in with Alex Smith a few years ago. I think Alex Smith and Geno Smith, not just because they have the same last name, are very similar players at this point, okay? The Chiefs had a guy in Alex Smith who made Pro Bowls, who you know won a lot of games, but they saw a guy in Patrick Mahomes that they loved, that they couldn't pass on. They drafted him. He sat behind Alex Smith for a year, and then he flourished when he was ready to go. I think for Seattle, what you found with Geno Smith is a guy that is a perfect placeholder until you find your guy, that you you can buy time with Geno Smith until you find that right guy. So if Seattle find them, finds themselves in a position this next draft where they say, yeah, that's the guy we want, then you bring Geno back, and then you put that guy in when he's ready to go. But that's where I look at that situation as far as I'm concerned, Ashley. Thanks for the question. Alien wants to know, any moves for the Seahawks before the trade deadline next week? So the tra trade deadline is going to be on November 1st. And I got to tell you, uh, I think it is going to be a very eventful day in the NFL. And the talk going into this season was that the Seahawks would be sellers and not buyers. I think around the NFL there was a belief that the Seahawks would be taking calls for Tyler Lockett. That was kind of the discussion going on around the league. And now with the way that things have played out, the Seahawks, I think, are going to be buying. I think that they're going to look around and they're going to see what type of bargains they could find to potentially bring in a couple plug-and-play players of some sorts. You're not going to be trading for any franchise players, but I do think that you'll you could be looking around for those bargain buys of some sorts. I, I think the Seahawks are much more likely to be buyers than sellers. What say you, though? I'm very curious. Will the Seahawks be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline next week? If you think they're going to be buying, type B for buy. If you think they'll sell, type S for sell. Let me know in the comments section below. Got a few more questions for you. This one from Nick. He writes hashtag Seahawks, hashtag Papa Seahawk. What are our chances of making the playoffs after our statement win over the Chargers. Also, can Malcolm Smith return to the Seahawks? Uh, playoff chances, here's the thing. That Chargers team, I think personally, was probably about the second or third best team roster-wise the Seahawks will play all season. You still have the Chiefs coming up. We know that the Niners got better with Christian McCaffrey. But you look on down the line here, to me, that was a statement win for Seattle, not only to beat a good team like the Chargers like that, but to do so on the road 
That was a big deal, and that certainly helps the playoff hopes. Um, I would say right now, because of seven teams make the playoffs, because they expand a wild card and everything, the Seahawks are more likely to make the playoffs than not make them right now, I think, at this point in time. Uh, Malcolm Smith, can he make a return? Eh, I, w- I wouldn't count on it. I'll put it that way, uh, Nick, but a uh, good question there. Sagan says, what do we do with Locke? Well, um, Drew Locke, he looks better than that, uh, that quarterback in Denver right now. <laughs> uh, Drew Locke, what do you do with him? I think he's your backup. And the Seahawks coaching staff, they like Drew Locke. They've said good things about him. If something were to happen to Geno Smith, God forbid, if there's an injury of some sorts, he's your backup. And that's okay. Somebody's got to be the backup. So, for me, I, I look at Drew Locke. He'll, he'll hold down that role. I think that if you ask Drew Locke to start a game or two for you, if something were to happen with Geno Smith, that's not the end of the world. I think Drew Locke is very capable of pulling off a win or two if you need him to as a backup quarterback. That is just fine. I highly doubt the world is going to fall apart with one start from Drew Locke as your backup quarterback, if that were to happen of some sorts. Now, where I'm concerned about Drew Locke is if you were to throw him out there for a lot of games, and for if he were to be your starter, then there would be, I think, some potential issues there. But as your backup, Drew Locke is just fine to be your backup quarterback as far as I'm concerned. So, Sagan, thanks for the question there. As always, you can interact with me. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Tyler Jones Live talking about your Seattle Seahawks on all those social media platforms as well as the rest of the National Football League. Give me a follow there, and I will see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.